Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to see how to do authentication in Archit Core. We will use OpenID to authenticate the Archit Core application uh, using a React app. Uh, React app is a Next.js app. Uh, we will create a Next.js app and then we will also create a Archit Core CMS and then we will use the Next.js app to authenticate the Archit Core using OpenID. Let's get started. To follow along, as always, I have created a a blog post you can actually follow along with the blog post um so to create a cms we have a getting started guide just follow the getting started guide i have created a simple folder here and then i will use our um .NET new um, cli and then create a my cms project so uh this is our maybe we can split it into two here I will first make a, a EMS directory and then I will make a um, React directory and then we will see we have two folders here. We will navigate EMS and now we will create a CMS here and the CMS name is my CMS. Okay, our Archit Core app is created. Let's open it in uh, VS Code. Okay, you can see um, the CMS is ready. Uh, the version number uh, in the template is in previews we can actually change that the 1.1.0 is released so just let's see if it builds okay okay our build is successful let's go and check out the application uh, it's pretty basic um and now let's run the orchard core app okay our orchard core app is running here in uh 5000 control click and it will open up the setup page is here now let's do my cms make sure you select um how do i say let's zoom it in a little bit make sure you select a uh, headless cms and then leave the um, database as sqlite i will use my email address give a password and they finish setup now our cms is ready let's go and log in can also follow along with the um, uh, article here, which is called authentication using OpenID. Um, I have mentioned all the steps I'm going to follow here. Just follow through if you want. Um, so the first step is to go and create a content, come to the content item definition, content types, and click create new type, and then type languages. And we are going to get the titles and then say, and in the field, section we are going to add a new field text field and the name is going to be oh that's it it's going to be a very simple uh content uh you can come here in the content types and you can see that there is a new language so we just created a we can create a new language and see i'm gonna create a language called english and then give it a code called ian uh, and then publish it so once you publish the language you can actually come and view the language here yes you can see your language here at the same time, since it's a headless um, site, the GraphQL is enabled for you. You can come here and then query GraphQL. Um, you can create your own GraphQL query and then query the content. You can actually reduce what you want to query and then you will only query what you need. Perfect. We have our display text and then a code and then create the time. Now we have a content and we can view the content. But how would I make the React app authenticate and also view this content? That's what we're going to do now. So the first step is um, to create an OpenID client. So first is to create a scope and then we will create an OpenID client. So for that, you have to go to security, OpenID connect, management, scopes. For the first scope we are going to create is OpenID. Uh, this is just a default identifier for the user. And then I also want a role scope. Let's create these scopes and make sure you add uh, the tenant checkbox is checked because we are going to add the scope to the application. So now create a client called client1. The display name is going to be the same. It's going to be a public client because the React app is a public uh, JavaScript app and whatever you put in there is going to be exposed. Uh, yeah, this is going to be the port for the Re React app and then allow OpenID and role as a scope. And then let's save. That's it. Now we have an app. Uh, let's go and check what's the next step. Next step is to create a course policy. So let's go and then enable 
cars first go to features and that is cars configuration first enable the course configuration once that is enabled you should be able to see it under i think settings cars yes there is no course policy just create one it is a, a default policy and make sure you have all the, allow all credentials allow any origin and any headers uh, it's not recommended in production but for testing you can just allow everything and then click save now we have our course policy uh, we also need to update the course policy in orchard core app so come to the um section here i have added a course policy here this basically allows all the requests that comes in um just come and update the course policy here let's fix the indentation now we have to stop the app and run again okay our app is running perfect the next step is the next js app i'm going to create the next js app with typescript let's go and create our next app first i will um create a new tab navigate to the folder let's zoom it a little bit and create a next app i will call this my app okay our app is created now let's uh, navigate to my app and it's basically a, a next.js default application okay so it has a bunch of stuff um you don't need any of this we can just go on let's open this app in VS code okay perfect let's go and check out the blog post again now it's time to add packages so we're going to add apollo i think we also need to add graphql yeah okay we have added the packages now let's add a dot env file and update the env file with two entries we want to add so um you think about it um this is the base url this is the this is the url for the um application the base application and this is the url for the graphql um and we have our environment now let's go and create the components folder and in the components folder we will create the login component and we will just copy and paste the login component here okay so what is going on um here in the login component we are actually using usauth the usauth is coming from react oidc um package uh, this is the um oidc package we are using to do authentication using openid and that exposes an auth variable using auth and we are checking whether it's loading or there is any error and if we are authenticated we are actually displaying the sub the sub is the username sorry user id and if it is not then we are actually saying on click um yeah we are just saying hey uh, on click just call this function uh, which is uh, app dot sign in redirect um, typescript is complaining about something just going to try something like this yes it's not complaining now since now our login component is ready and this sign in redirect is available here uh we will look at how to configure that uh, in later first let's create the component and the next component is language component um, so we will create a file called languages.psx and copy that and paste here so what's going on here is this is the uh, graphql query we are getting the code display text modified uh, utc name so uh actually we don't need the name because we didn't create it we don't need the modified utc because we are not going to use it and in the languages you see we are using use query from the apollo client and we are passing the language query and then we are looping through uh, the language array which comes back and then we are just displaying the language name uh, it's a very simple um, component the main thing is if this use query is authenticated then this query will pass through and work so next step is to create um, um, an apollo client because we are using apollo to um, query the graphql data so let's create a folder called lib and we will create an apollo client yes and just copy and paste the files called code from here so what's going on here we are taking the set context from the apollo client we are taking the user from the oidc client and then these are basic apollo stuff so uh, we are creating um, 
uh, we are creating we are creating a http link using the uri which is coming from the uh, environment variable we set which is the graphql uri and we are um, actually setting the context so um when the authentication is successful the token will be stored in a session storage so the the structure of that um, um storage item is going to be oidc user and the url of the um, server and the name of the api client we, um application client we created so we are just passing that and if the token is available you will get it and if the token is available we are actually setting the bearer token so once that is set, we will use this as an auth link in the Apollo client, and then we will also use in memory cache, cache the request so that we are not calling multiple times to the server. Okay, now next step is to update the app.tx. So the app.tx is where we actually initialize the authentication. So let's go and update that. Okay, so we have our uh, newly created client here. And we are, this is the configuration for the OIDC authentication. So this is the authority. Authority is just the Orchard Core CMS uh, URL. So the, uh, the other things will be figured out by the package itself. And we just have to pass the client name. The response type is the code. It's actually important because uh, we are using authorization code uh, to, to authenticate the, it's, uh, the application. And then once the authentication is successful, we want the user to redirect back to our application. So that's the redirect URI. And these are the scopes we created. We are just asking, hey, give us the open ID and email scopes because we already assigned the scopes to the client ID. And this sign-in is just, it's just refreshing the page um, um, to the root uh, once the sign-in is successful. So it's actually a callback to the on-sign-in um, on callback. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen on the login. Um, we are actually, now we have to update the index page. This is what we have in the index page. We will, I also created a sample index page, yeah. Okay, in this index page, we have uh, put login component and languages component. Login component, as you saw, um, will uh, display a button if you're not logged in. If you're logged in, you will see a sub of your user. And in the language component, if, you, if the query is available, it then if you if, if you can get the if you can query the languages then you will see the data otherwise you will see another first let's run the application and then see what happens so uh, as you can see the the object code is still running you can go and check the browser yes our application is still running and we can go and then still query the data but if you come um, but for the next JS app just started it and yes so we have our uh, login button and a error um the login button because we are not authenticated and error because again we are not authenticated so when we log in let's see what happens it says authorization do you want to grant client one access to the data hope required open id i'm gonna say yes yes so you now see a logout but something happened in the language okay we actually have to display display text it's not let's see what yes now we have a display text. let's go and add a new language and then see what happens okay um go to go to content items and new language and i just added spanish as a language and let's let's come and see what happens here we have Spanish as a language. And if you want to see what, what is going on when I refresh, um, I can show you here um, in the fetch, you will see a GraphQL request going on and then we get to data. Perfect. Now let's do a logout and refresh again. Yes, we have an error. Let's let's log out. And okay, now this now we are logged out and then let's log in. Now we are in the login page now click and log in again yes now we are logged in we can see the languages and then we also see the user id so this is a simple demo uh, with open id and um, and using a react application trying to uh, log in and then consume the data 
from the CMS. Uh, if you come back, if you logged in, you will be back logged in. Yeah. So yeah, you can actually just um, consume it using C uh, using a razor page, but uh, now uh, now we are just consuming it through a React application. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel and uh, give a like button if you like the video. Um, otherwise, I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.